back here just outside of Enid at Johnston Seed Company and joining me once again is John Lamley, our production uh, director. And John, so we've been following the blue bonnet seeds. Yep. Um, so what was the process after they finished blooming? Okay, after they finished blooming, they forced, formed pods similar to what you know you would see on soybeans. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we do is once they get not completely dry or completely mature because native species typically like to shatter. Okay. So when they do get mature, they will, you know, of course the seed will, will fall out in various ways if you've seen a lot of plants in nature. So we have to come in a little bit early, sneak up on them, okay. to, so to speak, when they're a little green, and then we'll lay them down in a windrow. Allow that windrow to dry a lot, not completely in most cases, because if it gets completely dry, of course you'll see that shattering effect. This way we can get the plant material to dry somewhat, and then we'll come in pick up those windrows with a combine, uh, just like you would see, so you, you know, like canola. Them. Yes, we swat them, them. Okay. we swat them, put them in the windrow, okay. and then we'll come back through with the combine and pick up those windrows after a couple days. And of course, then once we get it in the combine, it's still got a little bit of moisture to it, so we have to bring it in, we have to dry it, which is what we have here on the tube, uh, and in which air pulls through it and can, completes the drying process. As you see many, of, like you saw in the field, the, the pods were still somewhat a little bit green, uh -huh. still intact in a lot of cases, plus there was loose seed also like we see here. But as time goes on, they dry, those pods will split open. Most of them will, not all of them, we'll still may have to mechanically knock some open. But as they split open, you'll hear them pop. And of course, as you see here, we have a lot of empty pods now. Yeah. And we'll take this and inside and process it. So we've got a lot of pods mixed with the seeds in right. here, and you've got this tube runs all the way through this pile here mm -hmm. that's pulling the air through it. And uh, just like I said, complete the drying process, but you can see in here, some of them are twisted, which means they're open, they're mm -hmm. empty, they'll easily remove through the cleaning process. Of course, some like this one is still, still a little tough. It was probably a little greener when we harvested, so it doesn't open up as easy. Okay. So we'll mechanically bust those and uh, try and get the seed out. You can see the seed's a little lighter color because it was a little less mature at the time, although it's probably still viable. Okay. So how long will you leave these drying? Uh, it just depends on the weather, uh, some of the humidity in the air, uh, as long as possible until we can, you know, until we can take it inside and clean it. Uh, we like to get the moisture down you know, 10%, just like, you know, 10, 12%, just like a farmer would with wheat or something like okay. that. Get the moisture, that way, once we get it processed, put in the bag, it won't spoil. We, we can't have any moisture because then your germination, it'll be affected germination and bad things and happen And that leads to mold and mildew That's within exactly your right. seeds, right. It, should, it stores best at the lowest possible moisture. Okay. And so that's what we're shooting for. So once it's dried, then what's the next step? We gotta get we'll, them, uh, some of these holes we'll out of it. We'll take the skid loader, stick the skid loader, pick it up, put it in a truck or a grain cart, haul it over, put it into the cleaning facility, and uh, we'll process it through a series of screens, and uh, which will remove those empty pods with the, probably most likely the empty ones, from the, the holes, I'd say, through the air. The full pods will still scalp over the top and we'll reprocess those and as eventually everything goes into just a small loose seed uh, with air, set of screens, we'll clean it to probably 99% plus purity. And when you say the air, the air actually is shooting There's some actually of the pull, stuff? Actually it's pulling air, it's like a, like a vacuum on it, okay. so all the lighter stuff material will be sucked off okay. as it flows through the system. Okay. And then there's, you know, if there's any issues with weed, there's, there's additional equipment or machines that we may require to get out some problem issues, but Based on what I saw in the field and the crop, I think we're fine. Well, once we go through the screen process, we should be good to go. So we'll after you've screened your seed, is that ready to be packaged? or what's Actually, it, it will, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do initial testing on it. We'll send it off to a lab. Uh, they will do, check the purity and the, germ, the germination on it. Mm -hmm. And if that's all satisfactory, then uh, we will take that, that seed and then, of course, package it as we're, you know, whatever the end consumer is going to buy it in, whether it's a 50 pound bag or a two pound bag or a four pound, just depends on what the end consumer, what their, uh, what the demand is. Okay, so you can kind of custom Yes, we kind of custom do it. And we're, most of this, most of the blue bonds typically will go into the wholesale market, basically to Texas. Okay. Uh, if, if, you know, if the crop's short down there, or we might even carry over some seed, just depends on 
what the demand is this year. And we've seen in this process a lot of other wildflowers that you're mm -hmm. growing here also, um, some of the lead plant and purple prairie mm -hmm. clover. Is the process similar for those? It or? is very similar. Uh, we, we Once again, once it, once it gets close to maturity, not mm -hmm. completely mature, because like I said, they tend to see the shatter. So we, you sneak up on them, you try to kind of harvest them a little bit of green and lay them down, put them in the Because that's the worst row. thing is if they start shattering. If they start the shattering, you've, you basically lost, you lost it. Yeah. I mean, if they, you, want, you want a little bit because, because being a wild species, they don't all mature evenly. Mm -hmm. So it prevents you from like direct combining in a lot of cases. Okay. And that's why we try to put it in the wind row to let it dry. But some of it's gonna be, you'll still see maybe a few blooms in the field when you're, hard, when you're swathing it mm -hmm. versus you'll see some of the shatter. So you gotta pick that fine line in there where you maximize your yield. Uh, hope the weather doesn't get you like it did on some of the blue bonnets. And uh, then we'll go ahead and combine it, pick it up, bring it in finish drying it, and then we'll run through the process just like this. Okay, and of course, you have wildflowers that are gonna continue blooming throughout all into the fall, mm -hmm. right? So you'll be doing this process over and over. It's, it's kind of a continual because, which is a nice thing for like the pollinator species. Mm -hmm. We don't want them all blooming at once. So we, we started with the blue bonnets in this case, and I'll probably finish up with the maximum sunflower. And there's oxide daisy, there's the purple prairie clover, the lead plant, the uh, Illinois bundle flower, the partridge pea, uh, some others I've probably left out, that'll continually go. So that's why when you do a pollinator, they do a pollinator mix, not just a pollinator species. Right. That way there's a constant blooming throughout the season to, you know, for the monarchs as well as like the pollinator species, there's constant food source all the way through the season. Excellent. Well, John, this has been fantastic. And sure. thank you for sharing the story before the seed gets into the sure. package. You're more than welcome. Glad to have you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.